Hey everyone, we're going to be starting here in just a few minutes. Let everyone get checked in. All right, guys, we've got about 22 of you in the room. Hey, Dusko. It, uh, it says Paul on here, but it's actually me. Paul is fast asleep over in uh, Spain and quarantined. He's not allowed to go anywhere. I'm using his account. Check, check, check. What's up, Daryl? Good to hear from you, brother. Jason, good to have you on here too, man. Can everybody hear me okay? Great. I'm on my ear pods, so sometimes I have a hard time. Um, is my, can you see my trading view screen? <laughs> Trevor, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, no. Let me, uh, I had it shared and my computer went to sleep on me, so. Let's try this again. There we go. There we go, get everybody in here. Now I just lost my answer to this open. Where'd my screen go, guys? Trying to find my questions where I can see where everybody's on here. Answered and dismissed. I'll have to uh, apologize, guys, for me being an idiot on here. Chat, here we go. There we go. Make sure you guys, is, uh, down at the bottom, if you check all panelists and attendees whenever you type something, uh, it'll pop up. Yeah, Daryl, I absolutely love trading you. Um, other than a few things, like it doesn't do uh, share bars, um, but they're working on that. Like I've talked to them about coming up with that. I'm trying to think what, it doesn't technically do a dot D chart, but I do just fine with a continuous chart, uh, doing my daily gaps off of it. Other than those two things, man, that's about it. Hey Mark, good to have you on here. Okay, good. Hey James, good evening, man. Yeah, no lockups, Daryl, at all. Like no lockups. Now I will say um, I'm using my MacBook Pro for this uh, demo tonight instead of my iMac. And I can tell a little bit of a difference if I open up um, like four workspaces, because uh, my iMac has an eight gig video card and the MacBook Pro I think has a two gig um, in it. I can tell a little bit of a difference um, on performance wise of flipping, you know, between 16 different charts. Yeah, Brian, absolutely. I'll, I'll do the regression channel. Let me write that down right now so I don't forget.
Bill and Jay, how are you, man? Bill, good to have you in here too, man. And I got all my good buddies in here. <laughs> all right. If you guys could, uh, hey, Sal, good to have you too, man. That's, uh, out of the Twitter world. Uh, if you guys can, in this little chat box, uh, if you could put in there like a short little one sentence uh, deal of what you'd like to see tonight. These are going to be held every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Um, they might be as short as 20 minutes, you know, depending on what people's questions are. And they could be as long as 45 minutes to an hour. It's, uh, hey, Timothy, that it's kind of more... Paul does the training deals that he's got going on. And this is kind of like the fill in between session where you, you know, you might not get your questions answered uh, during a 5k club session or something like that. Um, this is kind of the fill in between the blanks uh, part of like, Hey, how do you do this? What, you know, just really truthfully, anything, even if it's uh, not even W five T related, if it's just trading, it's trading view only. Uh, of what you'd like, you know, if you need to fix, if you're having a hard time making all your charts sync up or something show up that's not showing up, uh, I'll go through things to make your life a little easier. Yes, Daryl, we'll go over roller coaster. All right, making my list and checking it twice. Uh, Mark, I have no idea what Spy is going to do tomorrow. That uh, it, I've been sitting on the sidelines mostly the last two weeks. Um, it has just been crazy, and when we're whipping around a hundred points in one second, two seconds. Um, that I just don't like playing in that territory. I'm going through the questions. Let me write these down. Yes, Hugh, they uh, will be archived. Uh, it might take about two uh, business days for them to get posted up on the W5T site. Well, I'm glad you're not at work. You can join us tonight. Trisha, good. Well, what do you got on here? Um, Trisha, um, when I go over the regression lines, I'm going to show you how I do them. And I'll show you how Paul does them. And then you can kind of make your own. I, mine are, uh, I go the easier route. Um, they might be just a hair off, but they're good enough for me. New to the group, Juan, good to have you on here. You know, George, I, all right, what I can do is I, once I get this, uh, we'll draw up on these charts. And actually here, this is what I'm gonna do right now. I'm going to, according to trading view, I'm gonna post it in the chat box here. According to trading view, I'm going to send you guys, this is a link that has everything that's on my chart supposedly on trading view. Now, some people, when I send it to them, they have to log out of their account. Yeah, Matt, you may not. Um, I know one of my buddies, uh, John Garland, uh, I was actually at his house this last weekend in Atlanta practicing and going over some strategies and uh, we've come up with some good stuff. Um, he's not able and I'm not able to open up someone else's link when they send it to me unless I log out of trading view and then open the link and then it opens up. Why that is, I have no idea. You know, Dusko, um, I don't know about the Canada thing. I don't see why you couldn't. Um, I think it trading view is not uh, necessarily broker specific. 
I would think you would be able to because they're like worldwide. Uh, but I would definitely send them a message and ask them. You can tie in your, um, let me show you on the screen here. If you, I have it in paper trading mode because we'll probably do something in here. But if you were going to, let me log out. These are the brokers that you can currently hook up to TradingView. You can hook your existing TradeStation account, which uh, is awesome. Um, you can do your paper trading. I have uh, mine through AMP Futures. You can use Alpaca, Awanda, uh, for some of you guys to do Forex, Gemini, Trade of Eight, and Forex.com, all um, link in. And it is very, very quick. I mean, like literally, I can go from my TradeStation account to paper trading to AMP in like seconds. I mean, it's when I click on it, the first time you hook up your account, they send like a security code or something. But after that, uh, I mean, it's like very, very quick. As soon as you click it, it's, it's good to go. So let's go to paper trading. Connect. All right. Good for you, Sal. Now, Bill, I will say this. Um, if you hook your TradeStation account to TradingView, I have, uh, I don't personally trade from my TradeStation account anymore. I use AMP Futures. Um, but some of my uh, fellow friends and students that still use their TradeStation account experience the same lockup um, like they did when they used the TradeStation platform. I'm not talking bad on TradeStation. Um, it did me well for a long time. Um, I just didn't like it locking up all the time and trading view. My, my other thing is I use a Mac for everything, um, that I use my Mac for, I use iMac, MacBook Pro, iPad, iPhone, and trading view works on all of them. It's not the best in the world on the iPhone, but it's enough. You can close your trade if you need to on it. Let's go over here. Um, George, I'm going to tell you, uh, I have had, this is the funny thing. I haven't had anything go bad or go wrong that I've needed to contact uh, trading view. So I don't know how anybody could say their customer service is lousy. Uh, they, answer me back immediately i would say usually within an hour if it's the weekend i still get a response back probably within two hours um sometimes i think there was a holiday weekend that it was on monday morning when i got a response but they've been uh really really good <laughs> trevor the good stuff i don't know if i got the good stuff buddy all i can do is do the same thing uh, all the rest of us are, man, we're just, uh, you know, make an educated uh, guess with the indicators. If we had that magic crystal ball, we'd all be rich. I believe so, Matt, on using uh, CQ uh, G data. Um, I uh, on the page to log in, there's a section let me see here. Let's look on here. Account billing. On account and billing, I'm not going to go in there and publish to the world all my uh, personal info, but underneath there is where you connect. Um, I believe so. You connect uh, through there for your uh, data because you can get data direct from them, but it's like, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks a month, something like that. And you'd be better off to, you know what I mean, use your trade station, log in and use that live data from there. No, Jay, that's great. Um, yeah, he confirmed on here, guys, if, uh, yeah, he has it all painless that he uses trade station data in Canada.
Any discussion? Of tra- not yet, Daryl. Um, for Infinity, I don't know of it. Um, yeah, uh, the five hundred dollars per contract. Uh, believe it or not, uh, Amp and Tradeavate are the same. Um, I actually think it's four hundred dollars a contract during the day. Now, right now, I think they doubled it to eight hundred. But um, Daryl, it's on Amp futures. It's like two hundred dollars on. Russell, 400, I believe, four or 500 on ES. I can't remember off the top of my head on it. So, yeah, they and they have really, really low fees too. Trade of eight, I think, is the best if you're trading a lot of contracts, like, or if you're making a lot of trades per day. Um, they have a program for like 199 a month, if I recall right. And it's something crazy, like a dollar 26 round trip. Um, so, if you're trading 20, 30 contracts at a time and you're making two, three trades a day, that would pay for itself in like two days, three days compared with anybody else. Rusty, um, let's see, Daryl, user dome, then trading view for charting, great. Oh, okay, good. Rusty, um, I have talked to trading view and they said as of right now, they don't have it where you can share with another trading view user um like the because my i this is where this came from like two months ago um for where paul puts out the supply or the support and resistance zones for the 5k club and what i wanted to do was put those zones into a file that we could just send out to 5k club members and then that way because i know everybody's lazy like me and they don't want to do all the work <laughs> and uh, just click a button and they show up in your chart. Uh, but trading view said they do not have that yet. Um, it's something in the future. Gab, yeah, uh, Timothy, um, if I just, save basically i just go up in the um window up here in the web address and just copy and paste it typically you can open it up i can shoot an actual video of it um and record it that way if i wanted to if i was on this page right here i could hit this button right here and record it it'll only do up to 20 minutes and that's it and then it publishes it um i can do publish and it'll put the chart um onto my profile but it won't supposedly they said that you can open it and then save that workspace as your own as a new name and supposedly those lines and stuff would be in there the problem with if we did that every sunday for the 5k club is you wouldn't be able to combine um, the old ones with the new ones. So you would basically have to replicate your chart every time. And there's, that just wouldn't be work out right. Yeah. Hey, Par- yeah, Parker, 500 on yes. There you go. All right, Mark. All right, guys, we are going to get going on. Let's do, uh, let's do an only wave. Let's do 6E. And if you guys have your charts open, I don't know if you watched my video I did the other night. You can, uh, this button right up here, you can click through as many charts as you want. I mean, if you wanted to have one big chart over here that you got going, a couple other time frames over here, you can uh, very easily to go back and forth. Um, from any of them. I personally like the four chart one. Uh, One of the things too, when you click that down, make sure that it's highlighted in blue right there, symbol link. That way when you click over here on the right hand side, if you click ES, it's gonna open ES on everything that's over there. And let's go over to 6E. Let's open this up. Uh, Daryl, I don't know if 
I don't see anybody that asked a question on there. If they did, yeah, just make sure you guys put all panelists and attendees. I'm going to go through the uh, settings on this thing and see if I can change it to default where it automatically does that. Um, there you go. Okay, so 6E, we're going to go back to, I think it was like, let me see where this, Elliot Wade, where it's isolated out of. 10,127. We're going to go on a high over here. 10,170. 10,170. Usually you go to your highest point of the previous day, which just was earlier. So we're going to go to 10,177 on the Elliott Wave. Yeah, it's close to where it's going to give me the same, should give me the same output. There you go, it didn't change much, did it? I am trying to make these a little smaller. Give me some more screen space up top. And I don't need my wave count that big. There we go, gives us a little bit more. Man, Dave, I would, I tell you what, you, if you even knew the, the problem uh, or the challenge to making a Wave 5 screener, uh, I mean, that would be like the most coolest thing in the entire world. Problem is, is each one of these time frames, you have to go back and isolate the wave count and tr trying to, um, uh, automate that to make sure that it picks this candle right here i mean yes you could say you know the the highest point in the last you know x amount of candles the problem is is the candle count changes you know what i mean if you go on a three minute it could be candle 595 with a you know one day it's not that many candles uh behind depending on where you're at mark um uh, Isolate is, now, typically, if we were over here in this area, we would be isolating down in the low, but I'm going backwards in time to show you this fifth wave right here. This was around midnight. So what you do is you usually isolate at the high or the low of the previous day, that, depending on the time frame, and this one, it, this is the highest point that I can see around here. I just eyeball it. Doesn't matter if you're, you know, one candle off right here, you're going to be all right. So 173, 174, you click on the Elliott wave right here. You go over to the sprocket, click that, and it's 177. That's close enough to where I'm at. Typically, this box has a one in it. So you click in 10,177, which is, let me hover over here which is right down right here, this bar number. And you can move this around, guys. Um, you can make it go below, up top. I like having it up top because it's easier to see what's going on. So you hit 177, usually takes three to five seconds and it, um, it's not gonna change because it's on the same as what it was. But I'm gonna show you guys, great Mark, that I'm gonna show you something I learned this week that was kind of cool. And it actually involves using your channels. Um, on your wave four pullback, you can go up here. I'm gonna go to, this is where it says trend line, click that menu down, you go down to the very bottom and it's regression trend. Click that and this little box will pop up. If you drop it down, I have saved multiple channels with different colors uh, and settings for different things. And one of the ones that I did is I just did one for a wave four pullback. So you take it from the three, the bottom of the three and go to the four. 
if it's not on this what time frame we are we're on a three minute let's pull back over here come on babe where are we at there we go This one's not uh, a big one uh, that I'm able to show you because the wave is so small on this time frame. When you get a little bit bigger time frames, let me try it over here. Yep, there we go. All right, if you do a channel, the regression channel, yes, Mark, I'll do it on ES2. No, Daryl, uh, one, all right, if you use one on that start bar count, let me go over here. If you use one, it's going to start from whatever time frame that you put on there. So let's say um, you pick a one-hour chart. All right, I have the extended, uh, whatever the premium plan with TradingView, the top of the line one. It goes back, I believe they said 10,000 bars. So it is starting on, if you start on start bar one, it's gonna do the, well, look, let's just say, let's just write this down so I don't forget where we're at, 10,177. All right, if we change that to one, let's let it recount here. Now you don't even see that Elliott wave because it's not accurately, the market has changes so much between, uh, you know, between days and drops and weeks and the whole nine yards. Yeah, it doesn't even show. You wanna isolate of wherever you're at. So let's just say, for instance here, you're gonna wanna go to the low of yesterday which is right here so if you look over here on your count over here you have 10,398 so we're going to go underneath Elliott wave click the sprocket 10,398 click OK and we're going to wait for a pullback we actually actually had a fifth wave move right here this is all right so we did have a fifth wave move here it hit the target it kept going and turned into a three way up here and now we're in it. So it's just the fifth wave's turning into a longer one. But let me show you on this channel that I just did. Let me erase it. What I did, just click that regression channel. I'm gonna try this one. I color coded one that was a little bit brighter. You're gonna go to the three, which was right here. Three is now moved up top. You go to the high of the three, to the low of the four and drop that channel down. You don't wanna go long until your fifth wave is out of that fourth wave channel. Do you guys see that okay? Let me see some okays in the box there so I know you're following along. Okay, great. And let me draw it. Let me draw it again. I'm going to erase it just so you can see me do it again. Regression trend, which is, it'll say trend line normal to go all the way to the bottom regression trend. And then I have it set for way for, let's just say you, you just go to the top of the three, go to the four, click it. You can right click guys and settings. And you can extend the lines if you want. This is where you need to be above, that you wanna be above this point right here, which if you look, that point right there, 
is this green bar right here that came out. And you got to think too, you've got your bits on here also. So your cyan has crossed over the yellow right here. Your point of control dots, which are these purple dots right here, you want to be above your point of control. It did pull back on you just a little bit right there. Shouldn't have stopped you out. Um, yeah, 1069, 1958. Yeah, no, it shouldn't have stopped you out at all on that one. And then took off like a rocket, man, that uh, big time on it. But you want to make sure that you're above that point right there. So it did go right there. Um, but you always want to be above your 6-4 moving average, which would have been somewhere right in there, is where, which is actually right to the edge of that dot. If you take off settings and don't extend the lines, I like to have the lines extended so I can see. If you measure just that LA or the fourth wave pullback, you're going to want that little dot right there is where you want to go long which is where it went. Now, let's go up here and measure this fourth wave. This is a messy one. I don't like trading in the evenings, guys. Uh, I cut out trading in the evenings uh, for the most part, unless a, uh, oops, erase that. Unless a rocket goes off in the Middle East uh, and I wanna get in on an oil deal, um, I usually stay out in the evenings. But there's your three. Click your four. Whoop. What did I do there? Yeah, see this thing ain't even looking right. Go back up here. Click the three. Go to the wick of the four. Yeah, it's dropping down. I don't like this uh, setup at all. This thing may end up going range bound. Um, yes, uh, Joel, I do that on intraday. One of the things that you you also do too that a lot of people don't do is let me put this right here. I don't know if, if you guys know that this little box on the right hand side um, you can make your charts bigger where it's easier to work on them. All right, so on your fourth wave pullback. You want to do your 9140 Fibonacci, which you click right over here. Go down to Fib Retracement. And you are going to go from the third wave high, which is right here. You're going to go to zero. And then you're going to go to the third wave high, which is right there. But you're going to go to the right so that it extends out. You're going to drop that top line down to it. And there you go. Now, as of right now, we have not violated that 9140. If we dip below there, that's really gonna, like I can't get a nice channel on this fourth wave pullback. It's just a messy one. Um, I don't like messing with those when they come like that. Um, but your 9140, we're very, very close. How you, yes, Brian, uh, two is what I use on both of them. And I'll go over the channels real quick with you on it. Uh, settings on your take a screenshot of this guys if you want and this is the settings for the 9140 fib retracement um, after you change these go down here to the bottom left to template and click template and click save as and then name it you know w5t 9140 uh, fib or whatever you want to call it. And then the next time that you go to, it's going to remember that fib as the last one that you've used, which you can see right here. I've done it a couple of times, uh, but you can have your 9140 and you can have it that way. You don't have to keep going in here and changing it every time. Uh, or if you have other ones that you use. Yep. And let me, Brian, here's your um, here's your inputs. I do I just leave it as the two and negative two, and then I like doing the high low close divided by three. It tends to tighten the channel a little bit more to show me the wicks. If you guys read 
and you'll hear me preach us 50 million times uh, about the price action breakdown book. Uh, Dimitri Lemire, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, it's a black book with white uh, writing on the front of it. You can't miss it if you search it. It's like 10 or 11 bucks on Apple Books or Amazon, uh, 25, 30 bucks um, if you buy the actual book. And I had a student actually buy me the book uh, as a gift. I have it on uh, digital and uh, they bought it for me as a book or as a gift. But I do high, low, close divided by three tends to change the lines out. Same way with the um, channels, guys. You can save them however you want. I've got 60 minute channels or a certain color, 240s or one, daily, monthly, um, all that good stuff I have saved. Um, like for instance, let's just go here. Let's say we do a 240, that this is not a 240, but let's just say that it is that when I look at a chart, I know that that is a 240. So if I, I'm on, um, if I go to a different time frame and I see this channel, I know that that's a 240 channel and, you know, I may drop down to a 30 minute chart and I'll have 30 minute candles inside of a 240, uh, channel. Now, then I have, just to give you an idea, let's see, daily channel. My daily channels are green and tan. So the same way with it, if I have a daily channel. Now I have mindset where the dailies only show up on the daily chart, monthly and weekly only show up on that chart. That way I don't get too many of these overlapping. Um, that's the way that I like to do it. Yeah, Tom, sometimes that snap line, I have a, um, a heck of a time when I'm doing my gap charts that that snap to line, there's a magnet over here. If you click on it, you can click weak magnet or strong magnet or none, and it will snap it close. I like having it on the weak magnet that way, for instance, uh, let's just say if there was a gap over here, right here, I do my price ranges. I save these as, let's just say this was a daily gap. And I'm just guessing right here. Put that magnet, well, let's just say it's, and then you can edit it. put in the numbers for say Paul's um, support and resistance zones he puts out in the 5K club. This is how I do them very quickly. Um, you could also put it on what charts you want them to show on. So let's say you only want them to be on the da uh, daily chart. And you don't want them on your, uh, you know, you want to keep your smaller time frame charts looking good. Well, you can uncheck these um, and just have it on day. Save it as a template, save as, you can name it whatever you want. And then you can put, you know, Paul's uh, 5K club support and resistance zones. And then that way, every time you drop one of those, it's going to be, um, oh, I put it on daily. That's always like where to go. And, uh, I put it on, I took it off minutes. So let's say we leave it on there and it's very easy. So you just right click. The one thing I will tell y'all, do not forget to lock it. Like just make it a habit of yours. Every time when you punch in the coordinates, I take Paul's uh, 5k club deal, the support and resistance zones, and I just go down and check them. So if I draw a new one, I don't even, this is how I do it. Let me show you how. I don't even pay attention. I just go over here, click this, click one time on, uh, say it's Paul's resistance zones. I've got them saved under, but I just click down, down. I don't even go to the right number. I just put this on the chart just to have it. And then I just punch in this number, punch in the other number. And if you already have it saved as a default, your visibility, you don't have to mess around with it. It's already there. So literally it's just a couple seconds. Drag, 
I just I click, drop, drop, right click, edit, punch the numbers in, boom, but and it, this comes up first. Punch the numbers in, click OK, but do not forget to right click and lock. They don't have it um, as a default when you put it in there. I've talked to them about that. Hopefully it'll come out in one of the next updates um, where they'll put it when you do save a default under style, like right here, extend to the right, extend to the left, they'll have lock. Um, that box hopefully is coming soon. And then that's it. Then you go to the next one. Boom, boom. Right click, settings, coordinates, punch in the numbers on the um, 5k club list right click lock boom 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 settings coordinates already there done right click lock tell me how you couldn't do that in trade station or thinkorswim or ninja trader that quickly um i also like two guys this is kind of neat it tells you what the percentage is uh of that zone so it's basically telling you it's 12 ticks. Um, kind of neat. Um, I didn't realize that until the day. So let's take these off and remove. I don't want to keep you guys here all night, but if you if you guys have the time, I don't mind staying late for you. Okay, so we've got Isolating the leaf count, we got that one on there. I don't like this one here. I'm gonna go over to the ES. And yep, all right, we'll go on ES. What was it, uh, which one of you, what questions was it that you had on ES you wanted me to do on here? And I'll demo it for you right now. How do you draw your gaps? All right, this is how I draw my gaps. And my gap is not the same as what you were taught at OTA. Um, it's just something that I have learned and from just watching the market every day. So for instance, what I would do in this situation right here on daily chart is I would click price range. I am going to snap it there to there. Click this third box down over here, and that is your data window that's going to tell you what's on that candle. So I'm going to right click settings. We'll move this out of the way just so you can see. And so here's this red candle. I'm just going to hover underneath it. And if you look over here on the right, it's going to tell you the data for that window. So the close of that candle was 29.64. So we'll go over here, drop this to 29.64. And then the opening of this candle was 29.16. So we will go back to this one. and click OK. Right click it and lock it. So let's go. And that's how I do it. So then let's say we go back. And if anybody that has no, seen my charts, my daily here, let, let me just let me just show you my Just show you my all 
And I know this looks totally bad and people say there's no way they can operate on it. If you look at it from, you know, 30,000 foot view, it looks like it's just crazy. But during the day, while well, we were going along, I zoom out, let me put this down here. And I know that looks totally crazy, but during the day, you can hide these channel or the gaps if you don't want them in here. Um, you literally the bottom right hand side of your screen, just go to the bottom right, click this box right here. Everything that is on this chart is on this right hand side over here. So if you don't want this price range, you can just click that eyeball and it shuts it off. And you can do that on anything that uh, I've just been playing around with these Keltner channels. I uh, don't pay attention to them. I don't have any, uh, haven't used them enough to uh, give you a yay or a nay on it. Uh, but that's basically all those gaps that are in here. Every single one of them. And then what I do during, let me go over here and let's go to this. So while the market is going live, that mess that you see up there before, this is what I keep on my chart. So as we're going along, like this right now, we're going up, all right? We're right in the middle of this, so I have no idea which way we're gonna go, but if we go up to this line right here, more than likely, it's gonna be resistance and it's gonna pull back. If we make it through it, and this is just my own personal opinion, guys, something that I do on my own, um, and I don't know what this was at just a little bit ago um, before we clicked on it, Yes, uh, Brian, I, uh, yeah, even if it fills, and this is the thing with my gap, I go candle top, candle bottom. I don't care about the wick. And I know, I think Bob calls those inside gaps. Um, I look at them as support and resistance zones all day long, um, which we'll probably pull back down to this one. But if we make it through one, it typically goes to the other side of it. Now it may hit it and then turn around and pull back down. But as we go along, I, it kind of helps me make a decision to stay in a trade or tighten up stops. So for instance, as this went through this channel here, when we busted through this gap and I went long, as soon as it got up in here somewhere, if it started pulling back, I'm gonna move my stop loss up and take a profit out of there. If we move up to the actual, the next gap line, I move my stop loss literally, I'll follow right up behind it and drop it like right there. If it comes back and stops me out, great. It, you know what I mean? This is 38, that's uh, 32 ticks um, on the ES. That's not a bad, what is that? 375, 400 some dollars on a, a few minute run. If you're you know, scalping off of there. Now, what I do with those is I go over here on my, this is my monthly chart. And I have my monthly gaps on here. I do my monthly gaps in green. And then on my weekly chart, let me zoom backwards. Let this channel pop up on here. I know it confused the hell out of some people. There's too many lines and too noisy for you. Probably is. Uh, I just like, I like it during the day because I know where we're at and what's going on. Um, so having these side by side, I can see what's going on. So this daily gap. Over here, we're in the middle of it. So you notice we were up in here when we first started talking, we pulled down. Now we've gone in here. Um, so when I look over at the weekly chart, if I click on this gap, it's gonna pop up over here and tell you what the numbers were on that gap line. 
and that's 2422. So we're at 2427.25 right now. More than likely, it's going to drop to 2422. That uh, maybe, maybe not. That uh, just typically the the higher the time frame the stronger the gap um so when we get close on a daily typically it'll run down to the if there's a weekly gap close to it it'll pull to it and that's just my personal opinion oh well, and where are we at 24 27 24 26 we'll see if we go to this gap right here that's what I do with those gaps, guys. Um, I've got. Let me turn these off. Something else I've been playing around with too. Um, John Garland and I were working on some Fib Channel stuff this weekend. Not ready to put anything out about it because I don't know about it. I put a video out earlier, uh, just touching base on it. Typically, I do a 240 on this right chart. And oh, I shut off all my trend channels. I forgot I had this on there earlier. But anyhow, this is what I do. I keep channels on here on the 2438. Now, shit. Yeah, it took off. Um, yep. Well, I do have this on uh, paper trading right now, though. So that's uh, this may be 10 minutes behind, too. Uh, but look where we're at right now 2420. What did I just tell you on this, this weekly gap? Where'd we go? So we busted through there. We were in this gap right here, and we were so close to this one. And now we're working to the next one. This is how I work these gaps. Now, some people may say I'm a complete idiot and I don't know what I'm talking about, that once a gap is filled, it's no longer good. I consider gaps like a street. Just because you drive down once doesn't mean you don't drive down them again. Uh, and I use them as support and resistant zones. That's what I look for. And it did exactly what I wanted. And we were at 27, 28, and we're down to 18. So there's 40 ticks. Uh, at 12.50 a pop. So, what is that? 40 ticks, that's $500. That's in what, two minutes, three minutes? That's how I use them. But let's go back to my other chart. What about hourly on ES? All right, now let me isolate this thing just to make sure on the hourly. So we have, there's your bar count. We're gonna go here and click on it. 11,680. Now guys, we haven't even clicked on roller coaster and that's what I'm gonna hit next, 11,680. Um, Rusty, I'm not, let's see, can you put your zones on a monthly and then replicate it and change the time frame to weekly? No, you cannot. They don't um, have a way to do that. I do all my charting. Um, if you look here, well, I don't have a set. Uh, I just did the, this one real quick for the class. Um, uh, I do a continuous contract and I chart everything off of that. That way I don't have to keep reinventing the wheel every three months when the contract rolls over. Um, and then I have, usually I have the current contract right underneath it. I do that with Dow, NASDAQ, Russell, um, gold oil. I, that's not my full list that I have on my other one, but I just use this one for the demo. 
Yes, I have roller coaster on here. Let me turn, let's turn off bits and turn off Elliott Wave. Let's turn on roller coaster. Roller coaster, um, guys, what I like about it is if you read Paul's article he put out the other day that said getting in the groove, um, if you go through and you look, all right, on a one hour chart, this is not in the groove. I mean, this was a decent trade here. This is a decent trade here, but there's not a lot of them, you know, in here. So you go down in time frames, 30 minutes. Let me take this out of here. 30 minute chart, not a lot in the groove. 15 minute. And the nice thing about roller coaster is you don't have to isolate, you don't have to mess around with anything. Um, Market was closed there, so you couldn't really pick that one up. This one was a good one here, 24.67, ran it down to, what was that, 24.67, 23.70, but uh, 97, man, that was a hellacious move right there. It doesn't look like it, but yeah, that was a nice move right out of there. We came down, back up, and then shot down. That's out of there. You also, one of the things you guys got to think about too when you're making, if you keep your, you don't have to have it, but if you have your um, bias open, kind of helps you a little bit on, I think my mouse, I think my mouse battery must be dying on my Apple mouse. There we go. Let's pull this over here. Yeah, there's there's some decent moves on this one. We'll go down. To, a lot of times on roller coaster, it will pick up the third wave, depending on what you're trading. There's a few on there. Let's go down to four. There we go. Now there was a hold there. But these are some good moves. Very good moves. Um, this one was just recently this evening too. What time is it? 14? Yeah, right before the close. And we open back up here. Now if you look, let me blow this up so you can see it. On roller coaster, You have this stop loss built into it. And that on trading view, it doesn't give you slot lines like it does on TradeStation or Thinkorswim. It just gives you a red line right here. So this stopped you out right here at this number if that's where you want it. I'm not an idiot. If uh, you got in over here, you rode this all the way up here, I'm not gonna let it go all the way back down to here. That uh, when you get back into this consolidation, I'm gonna take it out there you know, at the bottom of that consolidation is where I would, before this next candle that, uh, but that's a lot of ticks. 23.21, even if it stopped you out right there at 23.75, 51, 204 ticks, not bad. That Dusko, I am on paper trading on here because if we place a trade or something else, I will show you stuff on here. And I believe the data is delayed 10 minutes on the paper trade. That's probably why you show a different number. No, Brian, I haven't. Um, that's a good question. I don't know if it on a tick chart let me see do we have those nope no no one there let's go over to 6a there's a nice move right there four minutes go down to three 
And this is getting in the groove. You go back there and look, or is it popping out consistent, profitable moves? Three minute time frame? No. You know what I mean? Four minute? Yes. That's a good one. That was a little one. Um, that was a hellacious one, and it did not stop you out either on that curve, which was awesome. Which just looking at this, this is a one, a two, a three, a four, and a fifth wave. I'd almost guarantee you. Let's uh, isolate this. 11,173. 11,173. Let's see if that shows that that was an LA wave. Lo and behold, it was, yep. See, my eye is trained for this. Can spot an Elliott wave a mile away. Yeah, there's your one, two. There's, actually, there was an Elliott wave up top, and then another one. But one, two, three, four, and five down. And then this one was violated down here. But if you shut off, um, Elliot, when you have roller coaster going on, I kind of like to have it plain. I typically run it on a chart by itself with nothing else on the chart, just roller coaster only. Um, that way you don't see any noise. But I see some nice moves on a four minute chart. Five minute, not so much. Hourly. What do we got on hourly? Yeah, not too much on that. 240. What do we got on 240? Nah, nothing on that one. Let's go to 60. See what we got. And this is something, you guys, you just cycle through. Um, all right. Doesn't take a genius. That That's a nice uh, on a 240 chart, man. You didn't go 1.08. Oh, we never hit our stop loss. This is the recommended stop loss, depending on your account, whether or not you can handle that much. We never got stopped out of that. Man, that is a massive move. Now this one is going good. I mean, look at these. These are, that's a massive, massive move. Massive, massive move there. Good move there. Really good move there. Really good. This one's in the groove. Uh, so a 240 on a 6E has been very accurate. So, and that's what you do. You just cycle through these charts. See you, Sal, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah, it auto, Daryl, it automates the stops. It puts this red line in here. Like, for instance, this one right here. Now, you have to move your stop loss up. You just use this red line. So, you would have gotten stopped out right there if you would have taken it. on it same way this one here didn't stop you out until right here so you went from one three seven six five one three three nine five yeah this was a good move down here too pulled back let's go to 15 yeah, nice move on the 15. Yeah, this 15-minute chart on 6E is doing really, really good on it. Typically, guys, this, uh, not always, but a lot of times this long move that roller coaster pulls out is the third wave of an Elliott wave. Not always, but a lot of times it is. Uh, yeah, that um, this 15-minute chart is kicking ass on 6E. That I mean, look how many times it's been right. I mean, it's one, two, three. Eh, depending on where you're at, if you would have uh, maybe a small stop out. Technically, it didn't stop you out. Uh, I would have stopped myself out on that one because there's not enough volume. You'll see the your bias is changing colors all over the damn place. Um, it's not telling you to go long. It's it doesn't know what to do on that one. But this one was massive move, massive move, massive move, good move, good move, massive, massive move. You only need one of those, man, to make your whole day. 
this was a massive move. Stopped you out technically and then took off like a rocket down. See, on the five minute, eh, it's all right. You know what I mean? It's not there. That's You got to get used to flipping through your time frames and find out which one has got your groove. See, the smaller time frames aren't doing, aren't doing you any good on that. 15 minutes is the one on 6E. Yeah, Daryl, it's a, it's a, the stop loss is a guide. It depends on your risk tolerance, how much is in your account, what you want to do. Um, most of these, most of these moves do not get stopped out that, uh, you know, nothing in life is a guarantee, but they are pretty darn accurate. Let's pull this one over here. Yeah, this one, hell, it only went a couple ticks negative there and then took off like a rocket out of it and we've got roller coaster i think i've covered regression trends what else would you guys like to hear about today man let us know well um, while you guys are typing i'm gonna put over here i don't know if you guys have ever looked over here on the right hand corner if you click more pretty neat little box that pops up and you can pick the time frame that you're on. So like say on this one, 15 minutes, everyone is selling on 15 minutes. These are all these different indicators that um, some people use. They're telling you the overall, you know, is it neutral? Is it a selling market, buying market? Um, and then it has the pivots down here too. Uh, let's see, George. Do you only try to trade the roller coaster signals that are between the zones? Um, what? When you mean zones, what do you mean? Yeah, James uh, Hanson. When you are, I think you will have better luck with um, roller coaster. Keeping your Elliott wave and bits on one chart and keeping your roller coaster plain by itself, it's a lot easier. Um, just, I mean, look at the chart, it's just a lot easier to use. Support and resistance. Yeah, if you had, um, let's, uh, all right, George, let's just make up some quick numbers here, real quick. Let's just say that. Right here was a support and resistance zone, and the box pops up for a possible short. Even if it dipped out of here and started going down, you would not take it because you'd be going into a support and resistance zone. Same way with, let's say, even though this one worked out, let's just say that there was a, a big support and resistance zone right here and this pops out you got to look at your risk to reward ratio uh where you're at do you have enough ticks between here and there to take it that would be a little too close for my comfort um now if this was up higher you know it was up here like this yeah that uh you know i'd still take that because you got enough risk to reward i mean that's more than three to one um, going up there, it's just now if it's down here like this, no, you're not going to take that long because it's too close. There's just not enough reward in there for your risk. Okay, great, George. Nell and Jay, what do you mean? Cover the use of the false stock. What is that? I hope this is helpful, guys. Uh, I mean, it's kind of, I don't know, I call it raw, unscripted. You guys just throw it out um, what you want. False breakout, stochastic. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, typically, this, uh, let's go, let me turn off roller coaster, turn on bits. And Elliot Weave. 
get rid of these zones I put in here so I don't wonder what they are later on. Let's isolate where we have 15 minutes. Let's do this candle right here, 10,843. 10,843. So that it gives us on a 15. There we go. And it violated it. Um, so let me zoom in here. Make this all right on your these arrows down below on your stochastic breakout. With Elliott Way or with bits, you want to take your trade when the cyan crosses over the yellow. Okay, we are close to that right now. Cyan has not crossed over there yet, even though we went all the way down here. We went down, we still haven't crossed over. It's looking like it could, but it looks like it could also be support and push back up and go over. But you want to be below the 6 4 moving average. And there, now your bias, you know, your stochastic is just telling you that you've crossed over. Um, and that's what that arrow stands for. That doesn't mean that you automatically go short. But when that arrow did come on, we went below that 6-4 moving average line. Plus you had, I don't know what you call it, hammer bottom. Probably would have taken that one. Uh, but it did have a green bias, though. So, I mean, to be... Better safe than sorry, you wouldn't have taken that one. That Now, it was still a good move, but that's how you use them. Same way with the green arrows, like this one right here. This one popped up to go. It, it's not telling you automatically go short or go long just because they're there. It's just saying that they have crossed over the stochastic uh, upper bow. To 80 20. If it's crossed over 80% going down, crossed over 20% coming back up. Your false breakout right here is telling you, let's pull this up here. All right. This right here, if you were right in this range right here, that false breakout is what those yellow dots are. It's telling you do not go long. If you look at your bias, it's still red. Yes, George. Uh, George, um, let me finish. It. Oh, let's put it this way: if your zone is in here, like say this is support resistant zones, you hit settings, visibility, and you can put in that you want them to show up on any chart, weeks, months, whatever you want. If you want them on every single chart, just click all those boxes, save it as um, a template, save as put W5T support resistant zones, and then that way it'll show up on every chart. Okay. Um, well, let me finish this one here on your false breakout. So down here at 11, 11, 15, this looks like we're going long. Get your, I call it a doji, but whatever you want to call it. That, I know the wicks are probably longer. You're thinking that you're going to go long, but if you look down here, the false breakout is telling you do not go that it's a false and look lo and behold what did it do came right back down came right back went back up again pulled back down again and lo and behold guess what happened on the next candle you got the arrow that we crossed over and the false breakout said it was okay to go and you got a yellow um not green but you got a yellow dot that we're going up uh, that it, the by the time frames on the higher time frames are neutral and not short biased, which they've been uh, based for quite a bias uh, going down. So that 
there's your up going up. Now, me personally, I don't want to take that until we've crossed over and um, the cyan has crossed over the yellow. So I wouldn't want to go until somewhere in there. The only problem that I see, th and this is being nighttime. Um, let's see, it was 12, 14. We just, we violated this fourth wave pullback like massively. Um, it's just, too, it's too messy for me. Let's put it that way. I like to have a nice clean Elliott wave. I like something that comes down, pulls into the green or yellow, turns around and comes back out and rockets down. Those are the ones that I like. This crap like this that goes chopping all over the place, go, go chop somewhere else. Uh, you know what I mean? It's too risky. No, James, um, some, it's, um, it's something to do with an update from trade station. Some have the arrow and some don't. Um, it's, we cannot figure out what it is. It's something on trade station side that's not letting the arrow, uh, pop up. Uh, I've had it on my trade station also. Um, yeah, um, Timothy, I did. It just did just cross over. So now you're getting, now you have solid three solid lines, 45 minutes of going down, and you have crossed over. Uh, the only thing that worries me is we've painted a two. Now this two can just keep moving down and down and down, and it could just turn around. Um, you do have an arrow there. I don't trade 6E. Uh, a lot or 6A, so I don't know it very well. If it was ES, um, I just don't trade in the evenings. Um, I get my ass handed to me in the evenings, um, so I just don't mess with them unless a rocket goes off. You're welcome, James or Jason. Thanks, man. Awesome, Jason. Timothy. All right, guys, if that's it, I'm uh, send where do we get out of here in an hour? Ah, we're close. Hour and 15, 16 minutes. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to do these every Wednesday, and they're going to basically be like this, where uh, it's not really uh, scripted at all. Uh, we'll just play it by ear, you know, whatever, whatever everybody is having some issues with that week or needs a little help or clarification, I'll be here. So like I said, they could be, could be longer and, they, well, hopefully not longer than this, but they could be shorter too. You know what I mean? If we get everybody's questions answered in 20, 30 minutes, um, I'm just here to help you guys. So anything you need, you reach out, you guys have my number, um, uh, email or message me on Twitter. That's the, send me a message through there and I'll get back with you as soon as possible. Thanks Rusty, man. You guys all have a good night. If you need anything, reach out. Thanks for, uh, all of you all that are trade the fifth customers, man. It means a lot. Um, just, you know, any help that I can to help you be successful. Don't feel, don't feel like you're bothering me either. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night.